Hey, I'm Will Bartlett, and in today's After Effects tutorial brought to you by Storyblocks, I'm gonna teach you how to add animated illustrations to footage to transform a common visual into something unexpected and visually pleasing. This is a fun and creative effect to make, and it's not that hard to do. It just takes a bit of time to complete, and the end result is well worth it. Let's jump into After Effects CC and get started. All right, I have After Effects open, and I'm gonna break down what I did on each layer in order to get this final result. Let's go ahead and create another composition and recreate the effects. In the project panel window, I have the footage imported into a footage folder. Let's drag that down onto a new composition. And then let's go to composition, composition settings, and then change the start time code to zero. That allows us to better understand which frame we're on. And then we'll right click, go to rename and rename the composition. And then in our composition, we'll click on our layer and then go to edit, duplicate, and then we'll click our bottom layer, press enter on the keyboard and rename it to BG for background. And then we'll rename our second layer, animated scribble line. And then from there, we'll make some adjustments so that we have more space to work with. And I have here open my paint and brushes panels. If you don't have those open, you can go to window and then brushes and paint to make sure those are on. And then let's switch our tool to the paintbrush up in the tools bar. And you won't be able to paint anything onto the frame because you're currently in the composition panel. So in order to get into the layer, let's double click it. And that opened up our layer and you'll notice that our cursor changed to the circle so we can now draw if we clicked. Then to get started, let's go to our paint panel. Setting the duration to a single frame means that when we draw, it'll only stay on one frame. Then we'll go to our brushes panel and set the diameter to 45. And then that will increase the size of our paintbrush tool. Let's make sure we're set to frame zero, and then now we are ready to start painting on frame by frame. So I'll draw one piece here, and then I'll press either page up or page down to navigate between frames. If you don't have a full size keyboard that has the page up and page down, then you can just click between the frames. Then we'll go to frame two, and we'll continue drawing. Then frame three, then frame four, and as you can see, you start to create an animation of the line animating across the screen. It does take a bit of time, so I'm gonna fast forward here and complete this part of the animation. Okay, so I've animated that now. Let's go ahead and press N on our keyboard to trim our timeline to two seconds and 24 frames. Then with the layer selected up in our effect controls panel, and if you don't have that, it's window effect controls. Under the paint effect, it says paint on transparent. So let's click on that. And then let's go back to our composition panel, turn off the background layer, and then press the toggle transparency button. You'll see that our animation animates on screen without our footage. So this is perfect. We have just our animation, and then we have another layer, which is just our footage. So let's turn our footage back on. Then we'll set our cursor to frame zero and preview it. So that's looking good. Next, we'll click our layer. And once again, we will duplicate it by pressing Control D or Command D on the Mac. And then with the new layer selected, we'll hit Enter and rename it to Explosions. And then we'll remove the paint effect in Effect Controls because we're gonna be starting over. We'll double click the layer to go into that layer so we can start painting again. We'll change our diameter to 19. And then we'll draw a dot. The next frame will be more of like a tiny little plus sign. And then the next frame will be slightly bigger. and we'll keep extending these outwards. And then at the end, we'll make them just a little bit smaller until they're just a dot. And then that will simulate it starting from the beginning, exploding outward, and then disappearing. Let's continue with a third one. I tend to always start with just a dot, head to the next frame, and just kind of build it up as it goes. And now that we've painted on four illustrations, let's head to the beginning of our composition and then preview it to see what it looks like. All right, so that's looking good. Next, with our explosions layer selected, we wanna make sure that the paint is set to paint on transparent. Let's preview that. Okay, great, those two illustrations are now done. Next, we'll create and animate the crown. So we'll go to explosions and duplicate that once more. We'll remove the paint effect. And this time, instead of setting the duration to single frame, we're gonna set it to right on. 
And what that means is when we paint on the crown, we only have to do it to one frame because it will automatically create two keyframes down here. And then over the duration of the keyframes, it will animate our illustration. Then I'll double click the layer and head to around one second. And then on this one frame, I'll paint on our crown illustration. Now that we've drawn the crown, let's go down to our layer. We'll rename this, go into our layer, into effects, paint. So the animation looks good. However, it's animating too slowly. So let's go ahead and grab all of these and then bring them to the beginning. Let's hit U on the keyboard. That'll open up all the keyframes on all the layers. And then we'll drag our composition panel up so we can reveal more of the keyframes. Then we'll move the timeline cursor to about where we want it to animate in. I would say around 16 frames. And we'll drag these keyframes all the way to there. Now for the four dots, we'll highlight those. Then we'll move each one so they appear over time. That's looking good. And then I'd like the animation to end around two seconds or so. So in order to do that, let's take our first keyframe on these bottom three layers, go to edit, copy, and then edit paste, and that will create the same keyframe here, and we'll do the same for these other layers. Now for the dots, we'll simply just trim the ending. Okay, great, so the animation is good, except you'll notice that it's not tracked to the dancer's head. To do that, let's go to the one second mark where we drew the crown on. And then with the background layer selected, let's go to Window and open up the Tracker panel. We'll click on Track Motion. We'll zoom in a bit, go back to our regular tool, and then open this part up, and we'll also extend this area. And then we'll place the center X right on her nose, and this will be a great spot to track. And then we'll increase the search area for the tracker. This will help it track more accurately. We'll go to File, New, Null Object. And then in our tracker panel window, we'll click on Edit Target. We'll set it to the Null Object. Click OK. And then because we're at the one second mark, we'll need to track it backwards and then forward. So we'll hit the Analyze Backward button over here. Then we'll go back to one second and do the same thing forward. And you'll see it jumped off at the end here, so we can manually adjust that ourselves. We'll go to the next frame. And that's all we need to do because we've only animated the crown up until around two seconds. We'll hit apply, okay. And then that sent the tracking data to our null object. And we no longer need the tracking data, so we can hit delete. And we'll rename the null object to tracking data. We can turn it off. And then this next step is very important. You wanna make sure that when you attach the crown data to the tracking data here by using the pick whip, you wanna make sure that you're doing it on the frame you painted in your animation. Then with the crown layer selected, let's go to effect controls and select paint on transparent. And now with the crown layer parented to the tracking data, it will follow her movement perfectly. All right, that's looking great. So the last step is to just add some color to this. So on the crown layer, let's go up to effects and presets and we'll type in fill. Then we'll drag it to the crown layer and we'll set that to a color we want. And then we'll select the fill layer in the effect controls panel. We'll copy it. We'll select explosions and we'll paste it. And then the final step is to change this color as well, just so there's some difference between the layers. And let's preview the final result. So the next time you're working on an editing project that could use some additional elements, remember that just by adding some rough animated illustrations over your footage, it can really help make it stand out. Okay, that brings us to the end of this After Effects tutorial brought to you by Storyblocks on how to add animated illustrations to your footage. My name is Will Bartlett and we'll see you next time.